With the conclusion of the trade and cooperation agreement, the EU and the UK prevented a no-deal Brexit at the last second and at the same time ensured a transitional legal basis for data transfers to the United Kingdom until June 30th. However, it was still open whether and how data transfers to the UK would be possible after the end of the transition period. And by the way, you should stay tuned until the end if you don't want to miss anything interesting. And if you don't want to miss anything at all, just subscribe to my channel and click the little bell. On February 19th, the European Commission published a draft adequacy decision for the level of data protection in the UK in accordance with Article 45 of the GDPR. This draft recognizes that the UK's level of data protection is comparable to that of the EU. If the draft is approved by the end of the transition period on June 30th, data transfers to the United Kingdom will remain unchanged in the future. In this case, companies would not have to implement any special guarantees, for example, st standard contractual clauses. The draft has already been forwarded to the European Data Protection Committee, the EDPB, for comment and now requires the approval of all 27 EU member states. The European Commission can only adopt the draft decision once these approvals have been obtained. For its part, the United Kingdom has already granted the EU an equivalent level of data protection so that from the point of view of the UK Data Protection Act, which is largely based on the GDPR, companies can already transfer personal data from the United Kingdom to the EU. After it comes into force, the resolution is to have a term of four years. During this period, the European Commission will continuously review the level of data protection in the UK. If there are any doubts, the European Commission reserves the right to temporarily suspend or even repeal the adequacy decision. It remains to be seen whether an adequacy decision by the European Commission will also stand before the ECJ. I reported several times on this. It's not easy. On July 16th last year, for example, in its Schrems II judgment, the European Court of Justice declared the EU-US privacy shield to be invalid for the USA. Even if the level of data protection in the UK does not currently differ significantly from that in the EU, questions remain about options for Secret Service access. On October 6th, the ECJ saw the unjustified retention of traffic and location data in the UK as a violation of EU fundamental rights. Against this background, EU data protectionists have already announced that they want to have a future adequacy decision examined by the ECJ. Nevertheless, despite all concerns, an adequacy decision for the UK would first of all ensure legal certainty and clarity on the part of companies. From a practical point of view, the move by the European Commission is therefore very welcome. And the January figures for German-British foreign trade were sobering. German imports fell by 56% compared to the previous year and exports by almost 30%. The analysts at Unicredit see Brexit as the main cause for this, which makes cross-border trade unprofitable for some companies, but also the inadequate preparation in Great Britain, which has created massive uncertainties for companies. If you ask British fund companies, however, they are relaxed. Both the UK and the Euro area are currently very attractive from a global perspective, says Matthew Beasley, Director of Investments at Artemis Funds Managers. The Brexit is more or less a topic of yesterday, they believe. <laughs> you will see. With the portfolio companies, a few things took place more slowly due to the extensive bureaucratic effort. But actually, there was no major problem. Small caps fund manager Andrew Clifton of wealth manager T. Rowe Price shares the view. I don't. The companies had currently correctly assessed the consequences of the exit in good time and took measures such as relocating warehouses or diversifying supply sources. In this case, they personally would not have had these problems, but others do. 
And for small and medium-sized companies, Brexit is generally of less relevance, he says. Yeah, that is the problem with bigger companies and with many politicians. They have still not realized how important small and medium-sized companies, what we always call SMEs, are for the whole economy. In Germany, they are the vast majority of economy. We, Fortunately, many of our politicians are now aware of this, but not not all of them here and uh, not all of them everywhere. And that's always a problem. Um, and obviously, some managers don't either. SMEs are the backbone of our economy. And a lot of them have issues because of Brexit. I just have to make that one clear because these fund managers always look at their quite limited horizon and don't see that big pictures, obviously, if they claim stuff like like uh, I just quoted. Because they say these are basically oriented towards the domestic market. That's not the case in many cases. Of course, a few things have changed, they say, and that will continue to be the case. But overall, Brexit is just a cross, cross flow, they think. And if, for example, companies now prefer deliveries from closer suppliers, the corona pandemic is more responsible. Yeah. Brexit has been an immense burden on the stock market over the past five years. A quarter of the capital invested in Great Britain has been lost during this period. The euro area was similarly unpopular with international investors, says Beasley, with corresponding consequences for the valuations. These are now lower than they have been in two decades, so the basis for good future performance. Almost every industry is extremely cheap, both historically and in comparison to its American counterpart. And the same applies to the euro area. Beasley sees the strong in influx of private equity capital since the beginning of the year as an indication of a trend reversal. The weakness of the dollar is making American investors look for opportunities overseas. So if the securities markets don't correct the low valuation first, the private markets will. However, there are a few exceptions. The increased bureaucratic effort is currently making life difficult for food manufacturers, but above all, there are concerns with regard to the financial industry. The financial service providers need even more security with regard to access to the European market, they say. There's a reason their stocks are trading so cheaply these days. And they make up a large part of the UK stock index FTSE. Their prices also weigh on it. In addition, the low interest rates are of course a burden. On the other hand, sectors that would particularly benefit from the recovery from the corona pandemic, such as the travel industry or retail, are particularly attractive. As far as corona is concerned, the United Kingdom even has an advantage. On the one hand, they are continuing with the vaccinations. On the other hand, tourism does not make up a large part of the economy. Tourism can be a growth driver for the euro area. But I'm not sure whether this is ready for it. Clifton also prefers a European perspective. Ultimately, focusing on the UK is not our strategy. At the end of last year, our portfolio contained 44% of stocks in UK companies, but it was only 20% dependent on the UK economy. Clifton relies on companies with sustainable growth prospects, uh, product and services that differ and that are well managed, no matter where they come from. This is also an advantage with a view to Brexit, admits Clifton. Brexit certainly has more influence on companies that have less strong competitive advantages. The market movements during the pandemic certainly caused movement in the portfolio. Some stocks have become too expensive, but the portfolio has not been overtaken in principle. For example, they are sticking to train line, which sells train and bus tickets and whose course has still not fully recovered from the slump in the wake of the Corona crisis. But Clifton is convinced the company will come back with Verve. 
In any case, it's a growth company over the next three to five years. In terms of country allocation, Germany is number two in the portfolio. Here, Clifton relies on Shop Pharmacy, the online marketplace Scout24 or the broker Flatex, but also on the Norma Group or the mechanical engineering company Axtron. And if you want to stay informed, please subscribe to my channel. Auf Wiedersehen.